In this video, we will learn how to fetch remote config values and activate them or apply them on top of the default values. And we will do it in the same function, set up app remote configuration. So our first step is we set default values. And after we set default values, we will fetch remote config values. So we will use same remote config object and we will need to get an instance of it. And once we have an instance of our remote config object, we can call fetch. And there are different implementation of this fetch method. One is with the expiration duration and another is with completion handler. We will try both of them. And the first one I want to try is completion handler. So I'll provide completion handler. And once our fetch completes successfully, this completion handler will be triggered and we will be provided with two objects as method arguments. One of them is remote config fetch status. Here we'll simply say status and an error object. I will replace it with an error. So as usual, the first line of code will be to check if there is an error and if there is, uh, we can display some information. But since we are fetching remote configuration values, I don't really like to let user know that um, while fetching some configuration values, an error took place. So if there is an error, we simply will not do anything. So my code will be if error equals nil. So if there is no error, then I would like to apply the values that were fetched to my mobile application. And it is new values that were fetched that are going to be used. So again, I will get the instance of my remote config. And then there is a function called activate fetched. And this is it. Now all the remote config values that were fetched will be activated in your mobile application. And the next time you are going to use it, for example, in our registration view controller, when we try to read the value of is registered button enabled key. It is the remote config value that was fetched will be used rather than the default value. But if there was no remote config value set up, it will be the default value that will be used. Now let's go back to our app delegate. And um, it is important to know that the values that were fetched from remote config, they will be cached for 12 hours. So if within these 12 hours, you will go to Firebase remote config and change those values and try to restart your mobile application. They will not be used because a cached version will be used. And only after 12 hours, the new value that you have set up in Firebase remote config will be applied. So I will add a little note here. Cache value will expire in 12 hours. It might sound not very convenient because you might want your new remote config values to be applied immediately, but for the performance purposes, this is better. And when you're ready to publish your mobile application into production, you should make sure that it is this version of the code that you're going to use. But for the development purposes, it's not very convenient because as a developer, while writing code, testing, debugging, you want to see those values to be applied immediately. So for the development purposes, there is a way to fetch these values and make them apply immediately. And in my next video, I'm going to show you how to do it.